guys, my name is Jaina and this is my July wrap up. So this month started off a little bit sucky in terms of the amount of books I was reading and the booktubeathon happened and then I was just on a roll. Even though after the booktubeathon ended I took a couple of days off just to relax and to take out all the stress from reading 300 to 400 pages per day but then I dived right in and read a ton of books. In total I read 13 books, one manga, and I'm currently in the middle of another book and another manga. So for this wrap up I'm just gonna mention every book, the rating for it, and what I thought about it in like a sentence or two. I was actually able to read a lot of non-review books for this month so I was really happy about that and I'm gonna start off with those. The Catastrophic History of You and Me by Jess Rothenberg. This book was a mix of contemporary slash paranormal and talks about a girl with a broken heart and she died from that broken heart and she's in this it's not really purgatory, but she's in the between, the in-between of dying and living. And it was interesting, even though it's not really my type of book, but I flew through this book. And I gave it three and a half to four stars. The next book is Hemlock by Kathleen Peacock, and this book is a reread. You should all know by now how much I love this book and how ha 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 this book is like one of my all-time favorite books. And I reread it because I wanted to reread it and because the second book is coming out really soon in September, people. So I thought, you know what, I should refresh my memory because I want to read this book as soon as I get it, meaning the second book. I reread this book in a single day and it was even better than the first time that I read it and ugh, just amazing, amazing. Then I read Pushing the Limits by Katie McGarry. This is contemporary but with a lot of angst and, and just like, it's... It reads more as a new adult book than a YA book, to be honest, but I loved this book so much. I gave it four stars and a half, and I loved Noah, and ooh, this book was just so good, and Echo is just amazing. Then I picked up Dairy 2 by Katie McGarry, which is the companion novel to Pushing the Limits. This book was not as good as uh, Pushing the Limits. Uh, but uh, it was still good. I gave it four stars. Moving on to the Infernal Devices trilogy. The first is Clockwork Angel and I told you guys that I will be reading this book in my July TBR. I read it and I told you if I really liked it, I'll pick up the sequel. I picked up Clockwork Prince. Oh, I got the right order this time. I love this book so much because I'm just a huge, huge, huge fan of Gem. So everyone was telling me to just go and pick up Clockwork Princess, you can't just leave it off. So I picked up Clockwork Princess. There you go, I started the trilogy and I finished the trilogy in July. Now to discuss the ratings for each specific book, I gave this book 4 stars because the beginning was really slow. It reminded me of City of Bones and I was about to give up the book but then Jem came along and I'm like, okay, he sounds intriguing, let me just wait a bit and... I flew through this book. I loved it. I gave it four stars. Then I immediately picked up Clockwork Prince. I'm not a fan of reading books in the series back to back, but I just had to know what happens next. So I picked this book up and oh my god. Um, it was definitely better than Clockwork Angel because there was no slow start to it. It just dove right into the action and to the drama and to the whole test wheel gem triangle. And I loved it, though towards the end I started feeling a bit eh about what was going to happen and I just didn't like the path or the direction Cassandra Clare took, but I'm like, no what, it was still a good book. So I gave it four stars. Then came Clockwork Princess and that book just, mm, mm -mm, nope, not a fan of this book. I gave it two stars, barely two stars. And then I read the epilogue and I'm like, meh, what, that happened? Mm. Mm. Then we've got my mangas. I read the first book in the Yuki Obata We Were There series. It consists of 16 volumes and I read this book and bah. I actually watched the movies, the Japanese movies, the first and second and it was a live action movie so it wasn't like a cartoon anime kind of thing. And I really, really loved the live actions and I didn't actually make the connections until um, I got this from the library and I'm like, oh wow, 
I know this. I know the story. But live action is in the copy paste of the manga, so I still got to enjoy it and be surprised at some parts. However, it does feel a bit childish, and I gave it three and a half stars. Then I started the second volume of We Were There, and I'm actually 85 pages through, and it's like 180 pages. And I'm really liking it. It's getting, uh, it's definitely getting better. We're getting more backstory and history about some of the characters, so they don't really seem so 2D to me. Moving on to my review books. The first book that I read was Some Quiet Place by Kelsey Sutton. I gave it three stars. The next book was Weather Witch by Shannon Delaney. This book is steampunk slash paranormal, I guess, and I wasn't a huge, huge fan of this book. I am going to write this off as it being steampunk, because steampunk and me, we just don't... Don't, don't go well together. Nope. However, I still gave this three stars. Then I picked up Torn by K.A. Robinson, and you guys should know by now how much I disliked this book. This book was not good. Now the last three books are actually also books. The first that I picked up from these is Eternity by Elizabeth Miles, the third book in the Fury Trilogy. This book, mmm. Really good. This was the book that I picked up after the book 2 a so it took me a while to finish it. I enjoyed every single page of this book. It was really good. Uh, even though Elizabeth Miles took a while to wrap up everything, I think she wrapped up everything in the last like 20 pages, but the book itself it did not really feel draggy or boring. I was really enjoying it, and even though <clears throat> Some the way who the main protagonist ended up with wasn't the person that I wanted it to end up with. I still really enjoyed this and I gave it four stars. Then I read The Chaos of Stars by Kirsten White. This book is mythology and honestly, this book felt more contemporary than mythology. It was such a laid back, chilled read that I did not stress about. It was just a non stressful book. Isadora felt like a friend, like we're hanging out and chilling and she's talking about her day. That's what it felt like. And I really liked that. I, it, I was a book, it was a book that I really needed. And I gave this four stars. I read one ebook, which was also a review book, and that was Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. You guys know how much I loved Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell, so when I got this book, I was just freaking excited about it. And it talks about a girl who is into the fandom of an eight book series. So it sounds a lot like Harry Potter. I really connected to the main protagonist because that's how I felt when the Harry Potter fandom or the Harry Potter books were still coming out and she was such a fantastic protagonist. I wasn't really sure about how I would... I had really high expectations for this book because of Eleanor and Park so I was kind of afraid to dive into this book but, oh my god, this book did not disappoint. I gave it five stars. It's, it's such a good book. Sleep, read fangirl. Yeah, reading fangirl trumps sleeping, for sure. I'm definitely gonna pre-order fangirl, like, as soon as possible, and also order myself my own copy of Eleanor and Park and attachments, because I'm a huge fan of Rainbow Well. If you guys haven't read Eleanor and Park, you should definitely read it. And if you haven't read Fangirl, then you should definitely pre-order it. The last book is Thornhill by Kathleen Peacock. I'm currently reading this book and I am a bit more than halfway through. This is kind of sad because I don't want this book to end. I have around 100 pages left of this book and I'm hoping to finish it today. Even though at the same time I'm really not hoping to do that because I want to be in this world for as long as I can. So these are all the books that I read for the month of July and... I've since, I don't know if you guys know about this, but we're gonna start doing reviews on our channel. If there are any of the books that I mentioned that you would like for me to do a review of, just put it in the comments below and I would definitely do that. I really want to do a series review for Hemlock and Thornhill. Not many people know about this series, so I thought I would do a review to basically let you guys know why you should pick this book up and this sequel. I might do about these and if you guys want me to do about any of the other books, let me know. That's everything. It's a wrap. Comment below, like if you like this video, subscribe if you're not a subscriber, and go enter our 1000 subscriber giveaway. And that's it. Have a nice day. Bye guys.